All right, friends, I'm going to go ahead and start. And if people trickle in, that's fine. I don't want to make uh, you all wait. Um, welcome to our, the, the beginning of our last week. Um, I'm pretty excited for what we're going to cover this week, but I'm also sad to see everybody just wrap up the course a little bit. Um, I'm hoping we'll all stay in touch and talk more about your ideas in the future after this course as well. So today we're going to jump right into um, sort of think about what we covered so far and then jump into the define an ideation step. So we're moving forward from empathize now. So, so far, I just want to talk about some of the tools we covered so far. Um, we already like, we also obviously covered some methodologies and some skills like active thinking as a skill and design thinking and community engagement as methodologies. But for the past week and a half, we've been really focused on some of these tools and how they might apply to these steps. So, so far we covered a lot of empathy tools, which was the self-exploration diagram, which is empathy turned inwards, like pre-design thinking, if you may. And then stakeholder mapping, empathy mapping, and persona mapping, all of these are design thinking tools you can use for the empathy stage to gain more insights, explore the communities uh, you want to engage with. And then today, I'm going to talk about two things you can use um, to complete the define stage, which is the second stage of design thinking. So today, we're going to talk about how to write problem statements and how to write how might be statements that will sort of uh, jump you into the ideation state, into the solution space. Before me, we move on to step two, define uh, officially. I want to talk about one important thing that I think design thinking neglects, that it's very important for community engagement. Um, so far, if you've had an experience with community engagement or design thinking, you may have realized that this course is a synthesis of both of those different methodologies. Um, but it also shows like similarities between the two, but there are also some um, areas that don't really uh, sort of mesh well. And one of those is I think checking assumptions. So if you remember in the community engagement conversations we were having, principles of community engagement, the documentaries we watched, everybody talks about sort of this importance of understanding the core need, understanding where people are coming from and um, when we were doing exercises like the empathy map or persona map, there's a certain amount of assumptions we're putting into them, especially if you're not doing direct interviews with people getting like 100% original first person stories. If we're doing persona maps, when we're doing stakeholder maps, there are always assumptions that we're putting into the information we know when we make those stuff. So one of the biggest things I want to talk about is the importance of checking your assumptions in the empathy stage before you move forward. Um, like making preliminary persona maps is a perfectly great way to start thinking about who your stakeholders are, what might they be experiencing. But I would encourage everyone to go check on those assumptions as in go do interviews, go do first person storytelling, um, go do surveys with people to really understand whether the assumptions you put down based on the research you have are correct or not in the uh, stakeholders with the people that you wanna solve a problem with. Um, so this doesn't really get talked about in design thinking at all. Um, most of the time we use a lot of case studies or examples when we're doing design thinking to really get the tools out to um, explain people what the strategies behind them are. But that leads to us making a lot of assumptions when we uh, do that. Like when we give an example and say people are experiencing poverty and we write about what poverty is from our own perspective, but we need to check our assumptions if we wanna be truly community engaged, if we wanna truly be um, giving the empathy stages credit, it's really important to go and test out your assumptions before you move into a big solution space, because then the solution you make will be based on your own assumptions. If you think back to the shoe design experiments, um, I had the person you were designing for in the design with you at all times because it was important for them to fact check you at every step. If you didn't have the person you were designing the shoe for in the group, then you would be basing the preliminary stuff, information you got from them, but you would be basing the rest of your ideation on your assumptions and on what you're building upon that information. So it's important to always get more and more information and insight from your partners. And that was something I really wanted to highlight before we move forward. Okay, 
I'm going to go ahead and we're going to jump into the define stage and we're also covered the ideation stage today. So define or reframe, we talked about last time too. This is all about uh, putting a perspective on your experiences and all of the insights you've received from uh, the people you want to work with, the communities you want to work with, and narrowing down the problem statements you would like to solve. So while we make sense of our insights and find the right problems to solve, we can use the two following tools, which are the problem statement and the how might we statement. So what's the problem statement? Let's start with that. So problem statements are concise descriptions of your design problems. These are generally one big sentence that's well constructed, meaning you write this multiple, multiple times and pick the one that you feel that best addresses the insights you received. And these are vital for your design team because you're supposed to be doing this in teams, not individually per se, to navigate the entire design process. So the goal of a problem statement is to articulate the problem so everybody can see its dimensions and feel inspired and sort of feel like they have a sense of direction in what they're uh, aiming for. So what does a problem statement look like? Um, usually it's made up of three things. You identify the user or the audience or uh, the people with need, you identify that. And then you write down what the need is or what the experience is, like what's the situation you're addressing. And then you put down the insight, like one of the main insights you receive from the empathy stage, you put it down to explain what the need is. So it looks like user needs blank, because or but or surprisingly, and then your insight. I'm gonna give an example that's gonna make more sense of this. So here's an example of user need and insight. It says an adult person who lives in a city, their need is to use a car for 10 to 16 minute trips, one to four times per week. And then there's a lot of insights. I'm gonna summarize it. It says the user doesn't wanna own his own car as it would be too expensive compared to his needs. He also wants to be environmentally conscious and economically affordable solutions. Um, so I wrote down a problem statement following the description above, user need insight. So it says 35 year old Tom living in New York City, that's my user, needs to travel frequently during the week for 10 to 60 minutes at a time. So sort of a like mid length um, travel distance based on a city, but or because he doesn't want to own and drive his own car because he finds it to be too expensive and too environmentally bothersome. So that is how a problem statement is written based on what you heard from uh, the insights you received. Uh, think about the persona or empathy maps you've been doing so far. I've seen Grayson's and Lana's. They were both wonderful. Like think about those insights and focus on some of the bigger ones that combine a larger or that hint to a larger issue. And then put down those insights and then think about what, uh, what kind of uh, need it reveals from based on things they feel, think, say, or do. So that's how you make a problem statement. Um, there's many ways, but I find this one to be the most direct and easier to comprehend and sort of practice. Um, so that was problem statement. So problem statement is where you clearly define the problem space. And that officially wraps up the problem space component, like the empathy part, the problem space. You wrap it up and you create this uh, one deliverable that is a problem statement. So what do you do with that? When you're starting the ideation step, which is the solution space now, we make two big chunks, problem space and solution space. So when you move with a problem state statement that sort of describes the problem state into the solution space, you create a statement that sort of directly responds to the problem statement. Problem statement says, this is the need because of this. And then the how might be statement says, how might we solve this need based on this insight? So it's a direct response to your problem statement. So here it says, how might we questions are short questions that launch brainstorms. You can create how might we statements to respond to your problem statement. So here are some examples of what a how might we statement looks like. And if you've ever done anything with iZone before, um, or if you've attended any like hackathons or anything, usually people generate questions that begin like this, how might we blank, like how might we do something? So here are some examples um, of how like a scope, like what's the range of a question should be. So here it says, what's too narrow? Uh, how might we create a cone to eat ice cream without dripping? That is way too specific of a design. If the problem is that the ice cream drips or it's like not very usable, portable in a cone, 
you shouldn't be just asking solutions that would directly only think about a cone. And then here's a too broad one. It says, how might we redesign dessert? That doesn't even think about ice cream. That doesn't say anything about the problem, which is dripping or spilling of ice cream. So here's a good in-between that they're giving. How might we redesign ice cream to be more portable for children so that it spills less? So here was the template. How might we, the intended experience, redesigning ice cream for children uh, is the scope I put down so that it spills less. Um, so here we are still thinking about ice cream dripping, but we are no longer narrowing down our solution space to only redesigning or recreating the cone. We can now think about what else can we put ice cream in so it spills or drips less. So it's important to have a scope that would let you brainstorm a variety of ideas, but it's also important you don't leave it too big so people are confused, like how might we redesign dessert? What does that have to do with anything? There's so many desserts. That doesn't really solve the problem here. So this is a direct response to a problem statement. So I'm gonna give the example again. This is the same problem statement from uh, the other example. So it says 35 year old Tom living in New York City needs to travel frequently, but doesn't wanna own and drive his own car because he finds it to be too expensive and environmentally bothersome. So I tried to write a how might be statement that addresses this concern, but isn't too narrow. Um, the example that uh, this website gave actually, where I took this example from, narrowed down their how might be statement to only figuring out solutions where he could share a car with somebody else or car specific solutions. But I thought if somebody lives in a city, why would we narrow our solutions down to only just how might we use cars differently so that's like it's more economically uh, affordable. So I changed that. So I wrote, how might we provide an environmentally conscious and economically affordable alternative to car ownership in a big city? Now this opens up solution space from not only like maybe doing like a car share or an Uber type of experience, but now you can think about public transportation. Can we launch him around with a helicopter? Can he just sprint to all of the places he needs to go? So there's like a way more avenues for him to consider how might we create an environmentally conscious and economically affordable solution to his problem, which is he doesn't want to own a car because it's expensive, it's environmentally like bothersome, and he travels a lot. So he needs some form of transportation. So these are two statements that directly interact with each other and ideally your how might be statement is directing you towards uh, a stage to brainstorm some ideas. So I'm going to stop here and ask if anybody has any questions or comments. Um, these are like two more textual tools that you can use that would help you sort of form a perspective around uh, the problem space and then launch you into brainstorming and I'm going to just describe brainstorming after this. Everybody doing good so far? Lana, you're muted if you're saying something. Excuse me. I have a, a problem statement considering my uh, disadvantaged communities or communities uh, facing trauma. Uh, for example, uh, how might this problem statement um, be applied to how might we. Uh, for example, uh, disadvantaged communities uh, have, uh, have a, a lot of populace that has uh, some mental issues or mental problems. And how might we uh, bring, bring a, a psychotherapy uh, that is free of charge to those communities? So that would be a how might we statement because they have this I, I, I suppose they have this um, a wish or they would like to uh, receive some type of therapy maybe for the problems they face, but they don't have the money or they cannot, cannot afford uh, this, kind, this kind of uh, like service. So how might we bring uh, to these communities this kind of service? Could this be a, a, a good problem or how might we think of? I think it definitely would be. Actually, the homework I was going to give for today, like at the end of today, was for all of you to write a problem statement and a how might be statement based on all of the problems and like all of the insights you got from your empathy stage, like your impact focus. So that's definitely 
a good practice uh, to start around. And I would say to consider two things. One, um, what's the problem statement that's prompting you to narrow down your how might we statement to saying how might we make psychotherapy affordable? So my question is, are there any other potential solutions we could include in our brainstorming that would address the need the same way psychotherapy would um, like explain the need? Like, is there any other solution that could also fix the need or respond to the need in a similar way psychotherapy might? So I would say if the, if the answer to that is yes, you should rethink your how might we statement to make it a bit bigger and say, how might we provide uh, like psychological care to uh, your users? Like your or something like that, yes. Yeah, so if the answer is yes, I would say try to broaden your statement to include other solutions other than just psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. um, another thing I would say is like, rather than saying free psychotherapy, I would say, how about we make like psychological care or psychotherapy affordable in these neighborhoods or in these communities? And you would, you would get to brainstorm a lot of solutions. I think there's a lot of creative ways people do like, I know from certain NGOs in Turkey, they do a lot of like, PTSD, art therapy, like drama therapy, the children here, because um, the Syrian border is more of a war zone. So there's a lot of like non-clinical ways of people doing like psychotherapy and psychological care stuff. So I would say- so I was to... thinking more about- Yeah. I was thinking more about uh, something that was uh, perhaps like a program or artificial intelligence or something like that that would bring these solutions to a community not exactly a physical uh, encounter with a person maybe something that that they could application or something that, that could be put on some device or something like that so it can be introduced to uh, many people for a low cost or, or no cost at all maybe something like that that's a really cool idea if you wanted to optionally narrow down your solution space, like your how might be statement to an online or digital sense, yes. that would also be okay to do. Like you can definitely do that. Um, if you would rather keep your brainstorming parts broad, you could, you don't have to narrow it down to a digital space. You can just say affordable solutions, brainstorm both digital so and physical. Oh, I thought, can you hear us Lana? Yeah, okay, she can. Yeah, you got cut off for a couple seconds there. Oh, I did? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Um, I was saying, if you want to narrow down your solution space, like your how might be statement to a digital sense, that's okay to do. But if you would prefer to see what might come out of a brainstorm, if you keep it open, you can brainstorm digital and physical and then see if you want to do a combination or if you still feel like the digital solutions are better than the physical ones, I would say that's an option. Uh, you can either make it fully digital, like your how might be statement, or you can keep it broad and then figure out what solution is best in the ideation stage, like after this stage. You're muted, Lana. When I worked in one high school uh, years ago, I managed to make an online uh, like uh, counseling site for students and uh, they could write uh, with email, they could write email letters to us and we would uh, like uh, make, uh, make this uh, like email counseling because we didn't, uh, we couldn't afford this uh, like uh, uh, counseling in real, uh, real time. So we made uh, made this uh, like uh, service for our students, but it it would it wasn't really popular between students. They they preferred this uh, face to face contact. So uh, maybe maybe I should uh, realize that maybe I should incorporate both, like in face to face or something like that. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And that's a good um, like moment to try using the empathy map with your students, just like you can give it out to them and ask them to fill it out around this topic you're interested in and then see what insights they share back with you. And that could inform how you change around your how might be statement as well. But thank you, that was a really wonderful example as well. Hi Zoe, welcome back. We just covered problem statement and how might we statement. So now I'm going to introduce step three of design thinking, which is ideation. So now we're officially in the solution space. 
Um, this is a step where we step out of the problem space and jump into the solution space. And this is a stage where you follow a facilitated guideline sort of to generate creative and out of the box solutions to your how might be statement. So not to scare you, but sometimes ideation can look like this. It can cover like a whole wall of ideas or sometimes it looks like a long word document. Sometimes you can do ideation individually if you're trying to solve a problem personally. Uh, but most of the time we encourage people to do ideation, which is the brainstorming step basically in groups because then you can bounce off ideas off of each other. So like exactly like how Lana and I just had that conversation and thought about potential ways to do something. That's exactly how the brainstorming, the ideation st uh, step also works. So because you all have unique problem spaces you're exploring and they're sort of personal with personal experiences behind them, I didn't want to use them for our class. So I wrote down three um, just examples, how might be statements. Uh, and I'm going to divide you up into two groups, actually, because we didn't have everybody show up today. And I'm going to prompt you to just go and figure out solutions to these. Um, let's pick the first two because those were the two I liked the best. So I'm going to split you up into breakout rooms and then you will each be assigned one of these ideas. So the first one is how might we make airports a more playful and relaxed environment um, so that long way transit passengers, um, for long way transit passengers so that their travel experience is less stressful and then the second one is, how might we provide an environmentally conscious and economically affordable alternative to car ownership in a big city? This is the example prompt. Um, so I want us to split into groups and answer these two questions in a brainstorm way. So what is ideation, right? Like what's different than just regular brainstorming? Why are we making this into a big deal? So there's certain steps in in ideation that um, we follow that make it a more facilitated um, instruction other than just regular brainstorming. So here are things that we encourage people to follow when we split them into teams and ask them to provide like brainstorm solutions. So the first one um, is to be visual when you're thinking about a solution. It's nice to just doodle it and see how it may work. I would, um, this one is very important, staying focused on the topic. So only brainstorming within the scope of the how might be statement so that you don't get sidetracked, you don't get distracted, staying focused on the how might be statement. And the second, the third one that's pretty important is build on the ideas of each other. So if somebody says an idea, remember Madhavan and Theo's exercise where they said yes and this too. So that's an exercise where you build on the other person's idea to generate more ideas. So rather than saying, no, that doesn't make sense, you always say, yes, and also we could do this. So it's the time, the first part of the ideation, you never say no, you don't really judge. The, sec the fourth one here is deferred judgment. You don't say that's unfeasible, that's stupid. Any wild ideas, crazy ideas, stupid ideas, they're all okay in the first step of ideation because all of us, if we were to answer a simple problem, how might we make car ownership more affordable or how might we find alternatives that are more economically suitable to car ownership? All of our first five to 10 ideas will be the same. We have all the common ideas. So we got to get those out of the way to think more creatively, to go more wild so that we can find a good healthy medium between two crazy, like we launch him with a helicopter every single day to work or too common, like he should just take the bus instead. And we find a healthy medium of maybe let's start an affordable um, like alternative to public transportation where there's a certain bus route for a capacity of 10 people. Like somewhat crazy, but not as crazy as a helicopter, not as common as just car share, carpooling, that kind of stuff. So this is sort of the rules you follow to get to that headspace, to get to that healthy medium. You'd never is say no. Yes, Madawan. Is this taken? Is this taken on the catwalk? The picture. Yeah, it is. Julia doodled these, our director, and then she put them on the catwalk um, between the library and Douglas Dining. Yeah. Um, so these are some of the prompts. I'm going to share the presentation with you, so you can look at this when you're in breakout rooms. And here it just says "go, go, go," because basically. I'm going to give you the first 10 to 15 minutes to find up to 30 solutions, at least 30. I want you to go higher than that if you can. 
then you'll have five minutes to look at those 30 and say, okay, which ones are too crazy or too boring? You take those out. You have five more minutes to go down to 10. You say, okay, which ones would be more technologically feasible, more affordable, makes more sense, etc." You got five more minutes, you go down to five, which is where it gets competitive. Then you start to realize, oh, these ideas kind of look nice. They all could work. You can combine some ideas, not go too crazy, but if you see connections between some ideas, you can mesh them, merge them, and then you got five more minutes. This is where fighting starts in groups, and you go down to one. People go like, oh my God, I love all my ideas. I can't just go down to one. But this is the part where we realize, don't be married to your solution. If it works, it works. You gotta test it, and then you can test out a different solution afterwards. So we go down to one problem. I mean, one solution. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms. Like I said, um, you sh I'll share this presentation with you. Most likely I would suggest somebody share their screen in the breakout room and open a Google doc so you can type ideas. So everybody can just verbally say them out loud and somebody can scribe it for them. So group one will be how might we make airports a more playful and relaxed environment and group two will be how might we provide an environmentally conscious uh, alternative to car ownership. Let me make breakout rooms. Zoe, I'm going to put you in the, um, I'm going to put you in the airport one because Zoe is teaching a class on play. Cool. <laughs> All right, group one is Lana, Madhavan, and Zoe, and then group two is Bertha, Grayson, and Susan. And I'm going to uh, send out this link right now. So stay here for a second, don't go. Exit. All right, here you go. Here we go. Yeah. I sent the link. I sent Perfect. the link for the PowerPoint. You all got 15 minutes to get up to more than 30. I am ready to type stuff. I put down your group's prompts into your chat so you can copy paste it from there. <clears throat> Thank you. So should we start about, uh, with thinking about like transportation alternatives to a car just to get like some ideas of what we could do besides a car. Sure. So, or like alternatives to just like one person having a car. So we could do like maybe like a car share that like stops like on a certain route or something like that. Mm -hmm. At certain times every morning with people that live in like some in like close by neighborhoods. Now, do they have to use a car? I mean, no. New York is not the big. They can use 
he can use a bike, maybe his bike. Yeah, that's, well, if it's 10 to 6, well, I'll put that down, but also if it's 10 to 60 minutes, that's a bit oh. far to bike, but I will put that down. I'm going to say to bike, yes, and also we can literally get a helicopter to get him just everywhere he needs to be pronto. <laughs> Dennis, is it a, a 10 to 16 minute car drive or how are you estimating? It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. The point is he wants an environmentally conscious and more affordable solution than owning a car in New York City to get to the places he needs to go. Yeah, but if it would be like a 10 to 16 minute drive without tra with traffic, then it could be a very feasible bike ride. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fine. I would say try to get out all the common ideas that are popping into your head right off the bat because you need to go more than 30. So I would say get out like he can take the public transport. Write that yeah. down. That's a very common idea. Mm -hmm. He can do a carpool, like a car share with four people. Another common mm -hmm. idea. Just get those out out of your head and then start thinking really crazy ideas like a helicopter or I don't know, we <laughs> we engineer a teleportation machine. There you go. Those are all fine <laughs> ideas. And then if you find a healthy medium, that will be the good parts. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'll let you to your conversation. Places where you need to be or go or something like. Oh yeah, like your own personal assistant. Yeah, yeah. travel if agent kind of thing. If you're lost, for example, or don't know how to uh, find a way, some someone who will assist you. Oh yeah, that's the worst. Okay, I see this group is making moves already. <laughs> Why? Yes, we are. <laughs> Um, Zoe's the one who comes up with, uh, who's coming up with the most ideas at the moment. I'm no, I think, I think you're both ahead of me. Um, oh my god, I love the sleep boxes idea. The Paris airport has these like sleeping capsules and I have to stay for like 12 hours there. It was wonderful. Oh, that sounds nice. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, how about, how about um, roller, physical therapies. roller coaster? Um, Why don't we? physical therapies. Oh, that's so, a very good idea. Yeah, you could do like pool therapy and... You know, for example, I, I've heard that some uh, some uh, some people need, uh, for example, when they sit long a uh, long time, they need like assistance to, uh, to break this like back pain or something. And if you had a physical therapist, if, if he could, for example, give him a little massage or something or... Mm -hmm like stretch for a while or something it would be nice to have physical therapies you know what idea. i want i would love what? it if there were like mini automated robots that would carry around my luggage so i wouldn't have to drive oh, it around all the way absolutely Ooh. um okay so if i was bringing my dog on the trip i think i would want Do they, would they allow dogs on planes yeah well they have to go underneath i think um Really? But at the airport, I would want, like, a fun, I don't know, what do I want for my dog? I want my dog to go play with other dogs. So, like, a daycare center for my dog. Let's see. Um, Doggy you guys daycare. are halfway there. 15. You gotta go for 15 more. <laughs> okay. Did you write my doggy daycare? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's important. <laughs> uh, what else? A translator, for example, someone who can tr translate oh, uh, what mm. one for people uh, who come from different countries or something. Yes. Uh, someone who could be like an, um, uh, who knows how to uh, manage things around. Uh, mm -hmm. for, for example, someone who could give you uh, uh, an idea what it's like to uh, be a tourist in that country or something like that. Oh, yeah. you, are, you are going to some some information spot, for example, for where are you going, where you are going, or what you will be, uh, uh, what you will see, or something like that. Some information, like uh, general information about where you will be, where are you headed, or something like that. For, mm -hmm. Perhaps information uh, capsule where you can just. Uh, 
type of where are you going and they will give you information about that place or something like that. And so like local information booth? Yeah. Something like that. I'm going to give you another idea too. Like one of the things I hate is how I always have to be in public for like 24 hours, 40 hours if I'm doing long trips. So maybe like rent by the hour rooms where I can just like go in to change clothes, close my eyes, stuff like yes. that. All right, you guys have five more minutes. Um, I think you're going to make it this. to Turkey. I'm Turkey, yeah, I think you got this. I'm going to go into it. the other room. Good luck. Compost based car. Oh my God. I leave you for five <laughs> minutes and this happens. I love it. Good. Um. <laughs> Swan tour down the <laughs> I love that one. That's Thank you. <laughs> You could get a wind-powered scooter. Grow wings and fly. I, <laughs> I love how wild you guys want those. Those are really good. Wow, that's a good one. Wind-powered scooter. That's like speedy, very environmentally conscious. I like that. He could get like walk walk enhancers for his shoes that make him go faster when he walks but less tired in that generate like power on some, some islands around turkey they don't have cars they have like these like golf carts and people like they use them like taxis but golf carts work with like electric batteries so maybe like solar powered golf carts instead of cars mm -hmm. Like taxi kind of golf carts. He could start a business of taxi of solar powered taxi golf carts so that he makes money instead of spending money on it. I think you guys already might have 30. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> I was going to say we have like five more minutes, but I think we just went down to like three more minutes. So keep going at it. Could bioengineer a unicorn with wings. I guess a Pegasus. Oh my God, you you're good. Very majestically get to work. And on the way, he could sprinkle like glitter all around because that would make it more fun. I think he would get promoted if he showed up with a Pegasus. I think so. I feel like the glitter would make people angry, though. Okay, he could sprinkle. Yeah, you're in New York. They're not polite. Okay. <laughs> he could drop down like yep that would be relaxing botanical garden uh let's see all right see. friends i'm, I'm trying to think of other ideas urge you to write down three more ideas and when you get to three you should start eliminating so try to eliminate Maybe. at least 10 okay what in okay. five minutes zoe <laughs> okay <laughs> many world um uh, somewhere uh, that people can pray for example uh, i know that people coming from different cultures need to oh, pray yeah. some, five times a day or somewhere somewhere probably well they they can pray or where they can um just be alone for a while uh, doing uh, doing some meditation or something mm -hmm. Pray, uh, for 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 like um Um, One I like that. You guys are at 28, so if you want to stop now and start going down. No, 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 we can keep, go we can keep going. Just two more. <laughs> okay, just two more, and then give yourself five minutes and eliminate ten of them, okay? Okay. I want something else with luggage, but I can't think of anything. All right, friends, the time has come. I'm going to say, if you want to write down one or two more ideas, <laughs> go ahead, and then... Give yourself five minutes to go down, like eliminate 10 of those ideas. Okay. Like one in peace. Um, no, oh yes, the one, okay, the one that's gray that the lady is sitting on. If you go to the left of where your cursor is, she's like sitting, yeah. Huh. They're like inflatable and they're like motorized. Yeah, they're like motorized, like inflatable 
bites that you balance Interesting. on. Interesting. Wow. He could do anything. He could do that. I would say when you like start eliminating ideas, don't mm -hmm. delete them. Maybe just like cross over them or just copy paste the ones you want to keep or something. Okay. I think you guys have enough. You should probably start taking out at least 10. And when you take out 10, take out 10 more. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh... Slip, Maybe that would not be sanitary. You can't. Butlers. So. Roller coaster, also theme park. Gaming arcade. Translator scout. Multi roller just room. Doggy daycare. Are you Low guys rise. trying to take out some of these ideas? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're getting ones that are similar to each other. Um, these stress balls, I think we can, oh, uh, cushions, we can, it's similar to replace seats with cushion chairs. One, one to two hour long visit of Labor City, we could keep complimentary drinks. Well, uh, I guess if you have a butler, your butler could get those, so you could delete that one. Yeah. Automated robots that carry luggage and motorized luggage. I think that one one's going to be different for the other because motorized luggage you're going to keep with you at all times. Automated robots they're going to carry. So, um, how many more do we need to get rid of? One, two, three, oh, four, five, six, 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 What do you say? <laughs> 13, you have 24. You got to take out four more. And after that, you got to take out 10 more. So keep going. Oh, Dennis. Um, okay. Assistant, okay. Assistant slash travel agent and a translator. Will they be considered the same thing? Because uh, the, the staff's job is to speak multiple languages. Do we get to 30? I think that's 30. You guys got down to 30? 34. 34, hmm? yeah. We have 34 before we crossed stuff out. Okay, so you got to take out 14 in the first round. Okay. Okay, let's see. A compost car, I, I don't know if it is also a... That's real. Is it? Yeah. Hmm. I would Things say like vegetable oil. I would say you might want to take out ride a horse just because it <laughs> might be as animal friendly to use mm -hmm. horses. Okay. You we have could, yeah. here. You go. You have motorized scooter, and you all also have wind powered uh, scooter. Which one do you think is better? I'm not sure how the wind powered scooter. Oh, you could do like a sail. I have no idea how that would work, but I don't think it would work as well. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Like, I feel like a wind-powered scooter would be, like, with, uh, yeah, I'm not sure how a wind-powered scooter works. I don't know. Just because cool. conservation of energy exists yeah. in conservation of momentum. I would say the first idea, like the car share, that is now more boring compared to your other creative alternatives. Mm -hmm. True. Um, and like, so is train and subway. Well, those are kind of the same thing also. We can cross those out. Nice, I think you guys got down to around 20. Nice. Sure. I have some sad news for you though. We'll cross out more. So many. Now, now you gotta cross out ten more. Okay.
Um, sharing a car still might be kind of expensive because you have to pay for like upkeep of the car, gas. What, what would it be if we put these like challenges into this mini world theme park? Like we don't have to have a scavenger hunt. Maybe we could have something similar in this mini world theme park, like perhaps something of yeah. the same. I like that. So getting rid of scavenger hunt. Okay, rent personal room and sleep boxes. Could could we just have like a bed in your per, in your personal room such that uh, you can sleep there? That works. Um, I think we could also get rid of. Wait, there's gaming arcade, and then we also still have. World a Center. world park? Yeah, the mini world theme park could have games, so maybe we get rid of gaming arcade. Okay. I would say between automated robots and butlers, we should go for the more like humane alternative with the robots rather than have like butlers at airports. Mm. You can like adapt the automated robots that carry luggage to like automated robots that serve as your personal butlers, kind of thing. True. True. Good point. Because at this point, while you're going down, it will start to get harder. So I will encourage everybody to think about like technological, economical, and social feasibility of these ideas and see what's more conscious um, of like social economical situations etc and still what's more fun because you guys mm. are doing play you got <laughs> this like uh, I, five I more and you're down to ten you can do it um, would have been cool though yeah I think that, that uh, a solar power taxi golf cart business is exactly what New York City needs right now I agree. No, 15. So I would say at this stage, as it gets harder to pick, try to think about social, economical feasibility or technological feasibility of this stuff. What would be more environmentally conscious? That's because that's what he um, finds importance on and what is more affordable than the other stuff, perhaps. And as you strike out ideas, when you get down to five, um, you can still keep those to test in the future, but you're going to try to go down to one. But for now, try to think about what's more economically and environmentally feasible. Awesome. Um, rollerblade might be like exerting a lot of energy. Yeah, and you need to... What? So would walking, I said. Yeah. And walk enhancers, as cool as that would be, would need to be a whole new technology. <laughs> and biking is too boring. <laughs> I had a professor um, last fall who um, always biked to work like no matter what the weather was he was from the netherlands oh wow so, <laughs> he's, he's probably one of my favorite professors that i've ever had that's cool what's the segue hmm? what's segue it's like segue? one of those things that people use to tour around they're like on two wheels and have a handle so kind Tours. of like a scooter yeah it's kind of like a scooter Okay. So you have three. You have motorized scooter, normal scooter, and a Segway. You might want to just narrow that down to one. Let's get rid of the regular scooter because that would take too much work. And I think we should get rid of skateboard also because that would also be a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine though, like somebody like dressed up like in business clothes and just stuff, skirt, <laughs> just, like on a skateboard going down the road? Ooh, you guys are doing awesome. <laughs> it's tough. Uh, are those clusters or are they just standing close to each other? They're just standing close to each other. So there are nine ideas. Time to go down to five. Eight. 
ideas. Uh, One, two, oh, yeah, three, you're right. four, five, six, seven, eight. Nice. Okay. You got this. Mm. Uh, this is for, I mean, if we're talking about uh, innova innovation, I think we can also get rid of ideas that are already implemented. Like I, the multi-religious room is I was implemented. literally about to say the same thing. Like a lot of airports have religious uh, like prayer rooms and stuff. Okay, okay. What uh, is paint the road to your terminal? Like you like we could just uh, we could, or something? We could just add a bit of uh, artwork to your terminal, like paint the that's floors awesome. and walls. I know, I think that sounds really cool. That's very cool, wow. Uh, Maybe we could get a oh, like, replace seats with cushion chairs, even though I really like that. But maybe like if you work with a physical therapist, they'll give you a cushion knee chair. Yeah. Oh, or physical therapist. That works too. <laughs> One, two. And then that way, like, I feel like if we're talking about, like, social stuff, like, he could make some friends, like, having that, you know? Like, that's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it has all of these parts, like, marked. I know. It's funny. Designed for short trips around the city or last mile journeys. So what do they use? Do they use gas, oil? They're battery I mean, powered. I was, yeah. oh, okay. Is there any way you could make that more environmentally conscious, like turn this into a solar powered Yeah, thing? solar inflatable collapsible bike. Or it's if, really if it's battery, it. can it be more like, I don't know, biofuel or something? Like batteries aren't very environmentally conscious in a sense, but let's make it solar powered. Okay, while I enjoy these conversations, we have like five minutes left, so you're gonna have to get fast in eliminating things. Okay. Yeah, I feel like solar power car, like you I still have to have that. the upkeep of that, and that like is like the money issue. That's too expensive, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think I like the paint, the road to your terminal. Dennis, we all have different favorites. Can can we just pick our own favorite? <laughs> you can, but for the purposes of the activity, you're gonna have to agree to prototype one of them be first. Uh, but like uh, I said, you don't just throw these ideas into trash. You can always keep them. You can always implement multiple ideas, but we're gonna prototype one of them. So you should pick one that you want to test first, and then let's say you can test the second one out in the second expansion of your airport idea. Okay. okay. So the mini world okay. theme park could encompass everything that we have on this. We could have sleeping pods and whatever yeah. personal rooms. We can do paint your own, <laughs> your way to your terminal. How about this? Mini world theme park in basement of airport with with a mini with a renting room hotel and and gal and gallery for sculpture that's awesome like you can even a make unique art Oh my god. Art scheme for walls and floors. <laughs> like you can make like miniatures of uh like some like scenic or like monuments from your own country or your own city and oh. add it to the mini world. And yes. that could be oh. like your way of art instead of like painting a road. You yeah, make that's what like I mean. yeah, that's, that's awesome. So cool. I like it. That's what I mean by mini world theme park. All right, I'm gonna go into the breakout other breakout room but take one more minute and then we're gonna i'm gonna finish the breakout rooms you guys got this that's awesome job team beneficial mm -hmm. all right Great. friends sadly we've come to yeah. the end of our time for now uh if you couldn't make it down to one that's okay 
I think we've decided on the inflatable collapsible bike. What? Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. All right. I'm going to finish the breakout rooms and call everyone back to the main session. Thank okay. You Okay, everybody is back. Um, welcome back, everyone. So I would like for one of you to quickly say um, from both groups, what was your final idea so the other group can hear? Group one? Madhavan, you're muted. Oh, sorry, mind if I share screen? Yeah, go ahead. Let me stop sharing. Okay. Here's what we came up with. It's a combination of every one of our best ideas. So it's kind of like a mini world theme park with kind of like a gaming arcade, a couple, a couple simple rides. It's kind of in the basement of a hotel with kind of a basement of the airport. It has a hotel. You can get a tour guide that will show you around your layover city and uh, gal and has kind of like a, and the entire theme park has kind of like all these uh, sculpt sculptures from around the world, and we're gonna paint the areas all around all around with uh, kind of a unique pop art scheme. All right, thank you, Madaman. And group two. Grayson, you're also muted. I'm going to share my screen real quick too, because it's going to be faster to just show this than, okay. This thing here, this like inflatable bike thing that is battery powered is our solution. This like body part here is just like inflatable and it's like battery powered basically. And that is our solution. That's awesome. So as a person who like actively partook in both of your brainstorms, that was one of the best brainstorm sessions I've been in in like a year. Like you guys were awesome. I loved how wild you went and then how feasibly you considered options. And um, one of the bigger challenges I have is people tend to go for things they like, that they want to keep in their list and that makes it hard to eliminate stuff. But both of you, the teams, um, you all went for things you wanted to eliminate and that was the best way to go for ideation because the main point is you don't get married to your ideas because you're going to test them. You're going to next stage on Wednesday, you're going to prototype your ideas and then you're going to test them out. And if it doesn't work, you don't get heartbroken because you're not married to the idea, but you're married to solving the problem and whichever problem, like whichever solution addresses it best is the best solution. So, you all did wonderfully. I enjoyed like looking at both of your breakout sessions a lot. And um, I think it recorded the session. So when I upload it, you guys can check out what each other's did. Please share, um, if you took a screenshot for the AWA people, you can share that with me. And please share the Word document you guys were brainstorming on uh, for Susan, Grayson and Bertha. Um, I'm gonna really quickly tell you um, to do's for Wednesday, which is literally just there's two articles on how might we statements and problem statements and I assigned them because uh, the optional homework as an optional for either you can submit it by Wednesday or you can submit it by Friday is to create your own problem and how might we statements for the problem spaces you identified that you want to work in and that is the homework it shouldn't take you long at all but let me know if you want any brainstorming partners, like if you want me to be a brainstorming buddy, or if you want any feedback on your problem statement, I would be happy to uh, lend you some help. So that's the only assignment. You can give it by Wednesday or give it by Friday alongside the other stuff. Thank you already. That was an extremely fun session. So thank you all for being here. And um, we're a little over time, so I'm gonna let everybody go. So thank you so much. All right, see you. Bye.